78 Sports TV here. Thank you guys for joining us. Salute to the mighty LDBC. And uh, with us today, we got a very special guest. We have greatness in the building. Old oh. school dog, man. Uh, legendary dog, man. Uh, Mr. Roster, man. Boone, how you doing today, brother? How you doing, brother? I'm doing fine, man. Just glad to be amongst my great peers. Uh, man, salute to you, brother. Thank you for your time. Um, you know, we want to educate people on uh, these dogs and the history of the dogs. Uh, these videos are no way aimed to promote or encourage any illegal activity. This is a uh, history, and uh, that's what we're talking about today. So, Roster Man Boom, for those who don't know, uh, why don't you tell the people uh, who are you and how did you get into the dogs? Well, I started out as a young kid growing up in North Carolina. And um, love sports, you know, and play sports as a kid coming up and uh, just found competition to be something to enjoy and to get yourself up for, you know what I mean? Right. And, you know, you got different things that bring about competition, you know, different sports, different things. And, uh, and and I've always found competition as a, a enjoyment, you know, something that I love, you know what I mean? Like, you know, can I do this? Can I, how good can I be at this? Or how much better I can get at this? You know what I'm saying? So competition bring about, you know, a, a lot of thoughts and, uh, and, and then you want to ex execute them. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, um, uh, what, uh, how I got in the dogs was, uh, uh, my uncle, you know, uh, they, they had German shepherds and, you know, and they liked to roll them, you know what I mean? You know, back in the day, you know, that's, that's what it was. German shepherds, you know, way back in the sixties, going into the seventies, you know, they doing the little German shepherds and, uh, stuff like that. But, uh, along, along the way, uh, a friend of mine's, uh, had a, a, a pit bull mix with, the, I think it was, a, what was it, a Labrador. And uh, and I had old German Shepherd, and I was like, man, let's put that dog on him, man. And we did, and man, old Labrador pit showed, showed up, and old dog of mine took out running. And I figured I done lost him. Yeah, I, I rode around about th three hours trying to find Find him. I couldn't find him. So I said, man, let me go on home. And I went home and the dog was on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. So after seeing that, I said, damn, I ain't never seen a uh, whoop a dog make him run all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, man. I need to get me one of them kind of dogs, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and boy, from there, they, 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 you know, went on the hunt and uh, got a dog from a guy named uh, Jamie, uh, and uh, he had a dog named Wild Man and uh, Red Girl, and they had puppies. And so uh, I said, "Man, I want this one." And now nah, somebody got this one. I said, "I want that." Now nah, somebody got that. So I want that. Now nah, somebody got that one too. I said, well, damn, man, which one on the The one with the broke leg. You can get him. I said, well, damn, yeah, yeah, you going to get me the one. All right, give me that one with the broke leg. I'll take him. Right. You see, so I'm determined to, to, to make him something. You understand? Absolutely. And, uh, and so that's that's what I did. And, and he turned out to whoop the best one that they had out, out of the litter that they wouldn't let me have. Right, and, right. Uh, you know, but uh, and that's how I got started. Okay, what well, about what year was that? Oh man, shit, bro! You you asking me a hard question now. Let's see, let's go. Uh, in the seventies. Yeah, it was in the seventies. Yeah, yeah, it was in the seventies. It, it was long time way back, and then uh, you know we just moved on from there, and uh, just enjoyed this beautiful game, bro. Yeah, yeah, yes, it was in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, what bloodlines did you run? Um, you know, uh, when I first got into dogs, I had all Zebo dogs 
and Lopas is Buster Queenie Dogs. And so, you know, to me, you know, after seeing some of the gamest dogs, I had a dog off uh, Cheeto, uh, Lopas is Cheeto. Uh, and man, that was one of the big gamest dogs I ever had in my life, man. And uh, one of them. And uh, so I said, well, then, and then everybody would say, well, they bite hard, they ain't this and that. Well, I said, well, shoot, I had one that was dead game, and then I done had some that could bite hard, too. So, you know, so I kind of had a, a mixture of both. And uh, with the Zebo dogs, you know, you know what they were known for, mouth. Right. And uh, so uh, I had a whole bunch of them, and I just, uh, I got them from Mr. Whitley, and I just went through them. And, and, uh, and I said, well, whoever's standing there stay. And I said, I'm going to keep all the ones that keep scratching. And I said, the ones that don't, I'm going to get rid of them. So when it was all over, I had about forty of them. I had about six of them left, and uh, and, and 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 we took off from there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, what were you, what was you say? Some of your favorite dogs were you on? Uh, some of my favorite dogs, uh, Drill Bitch. I won five with her. Lost three with her. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see, Kush. You know, uh, uh, made him a champion, and uh, then the, the the Kush number one, I, I won one with him. Then Lady Stone brother Turbo, he was one of my favorites, and uh, and then I had another named True. He was one of my favorites. Turbo was a one time winner, one time loser, and uh, True was a one time winner. And uh, then we had Grand Champion JP, then uh, Champion Profile, then two time winner Iron, and then we had uh, Grand Champion Bronson. Uh, I loved his father too. Uh, uh, the Bronson I had was Bronson number two, and then you had Bronson number one, and uh, and uh, some dogs that I didn't have that I I really liked was uh, Grand Champion Zinc and uh, Grand Champion Wrangler. But I, I bought Wrangler, and uh, I was going to do him, but uh, and the reason why I bought him because every time he won, he always won off the bottom, but you know, that's, you know, and you know, cause right. everybody got their own way of doing things, but I just felt like I wanted to see him just one time on his feet. And, uh, but anyway, uh, we didn't get to do that. We bred him to a guy dog and the dog had, uh, a venereal disease and, um, and it got the best of, uh, bronze, I mean, say Wrangler and he passed away. And, um, the Tyrone was one of my favorites. Uh, uh, I liked the little sister, but them wasn't my dogs, you know, but I'm just saying dogs that, right. that, that I liked it. And uh, I liked it. Uh, um, I like, I even liked the Fat Bills Bolero, you know what I mean? Because when it was time to show up, she she did, you know what I mean? So can't take nothing from, you know, anytime it's come time to do work and you go do the work, you know, you know, that, that right. makes it. And another dog that we had around us, Tab Blue. Well, my dog, but a friend of mine, dog, is coming off there some of that stuff with uh, Bolero, but he was true to the maximum. And uh, then my Batman dog, uh, the Hungry dog, and man, it just had so many big dude, champion big dude. I, I just had so many. I'm so, I, my, my, you know, sometimes when I get asked certain questions to think about all the stuff that I've, I've done, and sometimes I get kind of blocked, and then when it's all over, then I can start figuring out oh, oh, stuff start coming to me. You know what right. I'm saying? So, Absolutely. You know, but, yeah. yeah, but anyway, go ahead. What do you got? <laughs> yes, indeed. You know what I mean? Um, what would you say? Uh, what happened uh, in in the match between you or well, your dog and uh, uh, grand, double grand champion Tornado? How did that match okay. come to be? Okay, well, what happened in that situation was uh, – we was matched then to Havana Chico, I mean Havana Danny and Havana Chico, the Havana boys. We was matched mm -hmm. in them, and Blondie was born bomb storming the, the the country, you know, killing up everything. So I requested that I put Lady Stone on some of that quality because I didn't want to do like some of these guys. They go get a a, a friend of theirs and then they bring the dog and they go to somebody's house and they let the dogs go for about 15, 20 minutes, then they stop it. And, and, and ain't nobody there but them and the guy that owned the house. And then right. they say, oh, well, I, I want another match. Well, it, it, to me, that's bullshit. But anyway. Right. Right. Uh, so when um, Blondie, 
you know, when I, when I was talking to the guys and they were like, we can get you hooked up. I said, we'll hook it up. So we hooked it up. And so before we did the match, uh, I was talking to Ricky Jones and he was like, look, he said, uh, 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 you ain't going to win. And if you do win, you know, you can get tornado. You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, damn, that's good. I'm get ready for both of these bitches. Ooh, I got some work to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy, right? I'm excited, right? Right. So I'm doing all I can to make sure uh, Lady Stone ready. And um, so we get to the dance. You know, uh, we weigh the dogs in. Lady Stone come in a half a pound over. And, and, um, and Blondie comes in at, Lady Stone comes in at 43 and a half. Blondie comes in at 42 and a half. The weight is 43. I'm a half a pound over and they're a half a pound under. You see what I'm saying? Right. You follow me? And so, but we drop them and, um, you know, it, it, Blondie was everything they said she was. That, that first 22 minutes was hell. This was like some of the worst minutes I ever seen in my life with one of my dogs. And, but Stone took it and just grind on, just stay grinding on the mother and the head and, and then just stay low and worked out and got out. And, and then about 22 minutes, she, she pulled out. And when she got out, it, she, you know, she shook that muzzle a little bit and then, and man, and then they went into it like a little, you know, like a little heat a little bit. And then all of a sudden Stone took a deep, a deep breath and, and uh, Stone had a, a, a hole in the chest the size of a big lemon, you right. know, because Blondie stayed in there for like 22 minutes in that same spot, in the really? same spot. And, uh, and, uh, and man... Man, look like somebody shot a rocket in Lady Stone ass. Boy, that bitch took off. And I'm telling you, bro, she did not look back. At the hour mark, at the 45 minute mark, they should have picked up. Because, you know, Stone was just sinking. You know, like when when they start sinking in and just having their way, you know what I mean? And then at the hour mark, it was it sh should have been stopped. But, you know, but you know how it is. You know, they thinking they're going to win. And, uh, right. Uh, and uh, you know, and and uh, they they thought they was going to win, but you know, Stone just uh, was a defense offense machine, fast like grease lightning. You know, big. She wasn't no little dog. That's what people fail to see. Stone wasn't no little dog. She was a big forty three, forty. She was big, man. She was a big right. dog. You know, and she, she, sitting on the chain, she might weigh fifty five, sixty pounds. Damn. <laughs> it was a big bitch, man. <laughs> yes, indeed. And I would draw all the way down. I remember when I first it was conditioned, my homeboy Jim, he was like, man, ain't no way you're going to get that bitch in 42. <laughs> <laughs> right. So after that, uh, b before that, Ricky Jones said, if you win, you get tornado. So after that night, we won. So I called Rick, I'm like, yo, what's up, man? I said, we won. He's like, oh, let me call you back. So then we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then he got tired of going back and forth. But I know Ricky wanted to do it. But it was up to Ken. So by this time, Ken and Fat Bill then became friends. And uh, Ken, you know, sponsored the, the game dog's time, you know, for Fat, you know, right. feeding him that money. You know, you know what I'm saying, you know. Right. He, he taking care of Fat Bill, Fat Bill, you know what I'm saying? And the whole time he asked him, said, you think we got a chance? And Fat Bill letting him know, said, man, they're going to be rough for you. You know, you take that chance right there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I tell Fat Bill today, you know, yo, man, you fucked up the thing, man, because. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We could have whooped their ass, you know what I mean? But uh he he gonna got them telling now, nah, man. But but then when I bred Lady Stone, and see a lot of people said that Tornado beat Lady Stone, they never seen one another. They never seen one another. Uh the dog that she beat was Sadie, and Sadie wasn't Lady Stone daughter. Sadie was an assassin. Um uh, what, uh, damn, 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 damn. Uh, Yellow John Bread Cross came from Floyd Hicks, which, uh, Frank Jacob and all that stuff. So, um, 
when Lady Stone was pregnant, Ken called me and said, hey, you know, the whole time that uh, I was trying to put Stone on him, because I wasn't going to breed her. I was going to, you know, match her, you know, set the date with him. And he was like, boom, I'm just going to tell you, it ain't going to happen. The only way it's going to happen is we put both of these bitches on the same show and and you you doing you going into somebody else and we're going to somebody else. And that's the only way they're going to be on the same. I said, well, listen, Ken, I'm not going to do that. And maybe I should have did it so everybody could have got a chance to see both of the bitches. And then maybe uh, it might have sparked him to do it. You know what I mean? But right. I just wanted head to head, Lady Stone, Tornado. You know, I was guaranteed that. You know, it was a guarantee that I was going to get that. But it didn't happen. So when I bred Stone, he, uh, Ken called, said, I heard you had another 43. I said, yeah. And uh, and so we 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 did Sadie, and uh, Sadie to me I felt was a good dog. I won two with her. I won two with Sadie, and she was a dog. She just gonna bomb storm you. She ain't have no smartness, no defense at all. She just straight out coming, you know, just straight out, you know. That that just how her style was, and and so, but to get the date with Tornado, I said, well, I'm gonna run Sadie a certain way. I'm going to condition her a certain way to, to go all out. I don't care if the bitch fall out. I don't give a damn what happens. You know what I mean? I just want that bitch to put pressure on that bitch so I can see if the pressure would make Tornado, you know, right. the fuck out of there. You know, get out of there. And Sadie put that pressure on her, and she tried to run off, but Sadie grabbed her, wouldn't let her go. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So I knew then, I knew then, I could beat him. I knew that. Because Stone was bigger than Sadie. Faster than Sadie. And had right. more mouth than Sadie. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So right. I knew then. I said, I can get him. You know what I mean? I knew I knew in my heart then I'd get him. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But uh, Ken, Ken, Ken told me he wasn't going to do it. So uh, anyway, I did Sadie. And uh, so in the midst of that, you know, I'm looking, I'm watching, you know, because see, what the young people don't do, they don't watch things to figure out what they can do to put themselves in the win column. Now, the win column comes in different ways, different forms, right? I ain't talking about cheating. I'm talking about using the rules and understanding the rules to your advantage, right? Okay, right. so now they say, okay, your bitch going to be dead in 15 minutes. This is what they telling me. Sadie and, and Tornado, they swapping. I mean, these bitches, they got them trying to tear one another apart, right? I'm looking. I say, damn, she getting to Sadie. Sadie getting to her. I say, Sadie can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with this bitch at least 40 minutes. I know she can. Ain't no way that bitch is staying for it. For, for, stay in that toe-to-toe 40 minutes with that. I say, she is back, motherfucker. Right. Because I knew I couldn't win the fight. But I knew mm -hmm. I could win a bet. You see what I'm saying? So, right. so, so goddamn it, they say bet. Can't say bet. So when the 40 minute came, I said, hey, "Give me the breaking stick." They said, "What you doing?" I said, "This shit over, man. You know, we we we, we even." <laughs> right. <laughs> Smooth. Smooth. Yes, sir. Whatever cuss me out, man. Whatever cuss me, you motherfucker. He, woo, he went off, man. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you trick me. God damn you, boy. You trick me. Nah, you trick yourself, motherfucker. <laughs> right. You wasn't paying attention. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so, indeed. so that's how that came about it. But, you know, it, even when you're in action, you know, even when you're boxing or whatever you're doing, you got to be able to think the process through. You can't wait till it's over and try to figure it out. That's too late. Right. You got to be able to, you know, see it and then execute it as you go through. And that's what we did. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about uh, going into Ricky Jones, what that was like. Oh, man. You know, you're talking about one of the top dogs that that that, that, that they ever did it, man. The only thing we don't like about Ricky is, you know, what he did to the to the brothers. You know what I mean? Right. And, um, you know, that wasn't right. But, you know, hey, that was on him. But as far as uh, competing, conditioning, 
I will say he wanted the best. I, I can truly say that. And uh, I'm not saying it did to blow his head up or nothing like that because he's truly a legend for real. And uh, and even though we know he did what he did, you know, ain't none of us proud of it. But we 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 do embrace the work that he did do that he put down. I I mean, you know, I I had the ultimate respect for the things that as uh, far as achieving with dogs and the things he did with dogs handling conditional. He, he was a beast. And so when I, when I first met him, you know, uh, after we beat Blondie, you know, he invited me to come and see uh, Grand Champion Zinc and uh, uh, Samson go. And so I said, okay, you know, you know, this was a little while afterwards, you know. And so I said, okay, he said, you fly in, I have somebody pick you up at the airport, you know, and, and bring you on in. So I did and uh, went down there. And I seen Grand Champion Zinc go against uh, Samson. And uh, I looked at Zinc and I said, damn, his hair looked brittle. He looked real brittle. He looked brittle. But that damn Samson looked like wet goddamn baby oil. Boy, that motherfucker looked so good. I was like, damn. So I didn't know Ken at the time. Ken didn't know me, but I just met Ricky over the phone, maybe within months, uh, seven, eight, nine, maybe a year or so or whatever. And, um, so they turn the dogs loose, but I bet against uh, Ken, you know, I, I bet against him. And uh, and so I was like, yo, man, I said, look, after so long, you know, Zinc would try, man. Zinc would doing everything. And then when Zinc would get in Samson ass in, Samson would let everything go on Zinc and try to get him, get on his muzzle to get him out of his ass in. And I was like, what the hell? That let me know that Zinc was biting harder. To, to me, now maybe I don't know what I'm looking at, you know what I mean? But to me, I I I I I I I I believe that if Zinc would have been in better shape, he'd have dropped Samson. That's what I believe. And uh so uh I told Ken, I said, hey man, pick the dog up and and uh, let me work the dog for you and then we can come back and get Ricky. And he was like, Who the hell is you? <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, you know, so uh, that's when we we got acquainted there, you know. But uh, anyway, Zinc died, but he put on a hell of a show, and he didn't care out. That motherfucker was goddamn scratching to the end, my brother. He just, you know, he he just, he got taken out. You know what I mean? But he, right. he gave his life. He gave, never whimpered, never hollered, never turned, none of that shit, bro. That mother took that shit like a soldier, man. So, right. uh, and, they, and ever since then, you know, Grand Champion Zinc has always been one of my favorites. I mean, I, I just, uh, you know, uh, but, uh, and so then I was like, okay, we did a dog named Hitman, you know, into Ricky. So uh, we go up there and we, we, we uh, my partner, Jam, he decides he want to, he want to handle the dog. And I'm saying, look, bro, you know, you, you this, this is a little different. This is not like being at home. I said, you know, this is, uh, we're at the top of the mountain here. Oh, you think you know everything? Did that, did that. I, mean, I can have it. I can have it. I know what I'm doing. Oh, bro, I'm trying to tell you, bro. Okay. All right, bro. It's my dog. Yeah, you're right. It's your dog. Okay. So we get in there, put the dogs down, cut them loose. And uh, I know we're feeling good. We're feeling good, man. We hit Ricky Dog in the muzzle. Man, we got him hollering, screaming. I mean, he's squirming. No. <laughs> He whining and crying. Boy, Hitman got them old big ass hangers dug down deep in his nose. Right. And so uh, Ricky say, my dog fame, my dog fame. And uh, Jim Combs, you know, Ricky buddy, he said, the dog is fame. I'm like, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. Now you got to remember, it's all these people, it's about 200 people in here. You know what I mean? Right. And, and I'm screaming to my homeboy, no, make him show you the fame first. Combs give him a breaking stick, give Ricky one, and my homeboy break the dog off of his nose, and Ricky get his dog back. Now you know, like I know, anytime you 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 break him and you're gonna defang him or whatever, then you go two steps back and you wait for the referee to right. say to release the dog. Correct? Right. Okay. Well, my homeboy, who thought he was ready had the dog front legs jacked up in the air. Oh. 
and Ricky looked back and seen that shit. Now tell me what Ricky did. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what he did, little bro. Man, let him go on. He let that man. I mean, he blasted him in the nuts. Bow! And that's where it ended. <laughs> I said, God damn it. We had it won, man. Little small mistake. We had it won. And, and so I said, okay, 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 cool, cool. No problem. No problem. We lost. You know, it was a good one. We lost. And I told Ricky, I said, listen, I said, uh, I got two more I'll bring back. I said, but this time I'll be in the pit. I said, and, uh, you took the advantage of my homeboy. I said, but you ain't going to take the advantage of me. You see what I'm saying? Right. I, I, I understand what I'm doing. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so we come back with the two bitches. He said, boom, you brought the two bird dogs. He said, boy, you know, Ricky had an entourage of motherfuckers from everywhere all over the world, you know. Boy, they were laughing at me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were laughing at me. Right, they were laughing at me, boy. They said, yeah, boo, you got them two bird dogs. Man, I brought uh, Witless Sandy in there. And Rick, I think that female he had was going for championship. And this uh, was Sandy first time out. And uh, the Cunningham boys had rolled Sandy and told Mr. Witless she wasn't even worth matching. So I told Mr. Willis, I said, look, how many dogs y'all put on? He said, we put on three dogs. I said, well, if y'all put on three dogs and she kept scratching on all three of them, I said, hell, I'll do the bitch anyway. So he said, okay, you take her. So we did it and we come back and uh, we won all our money back on that first one. And then we did her sister, which was ready. And uh, that didn't go for six minutes. So, you know, we came back and we got some revenge and, and, and you know, got our money back. You know what I mean? And a little more. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so that's how me and Ricky, um, you know, came about. And it was fun dealing with him, man, during the days. I really liked the guy, man. I, I thought he was a damn good guy. But, I, you know, and, uh, and until he went through all that, then you know, things changed, you know. So, but, uh, yeah. yeah, that's how that went. And uh, how was uh, what dogs did you use uh, going into Crenshaw? How did that turn out? Uh, Crenshaw, we um, this was the story. Okay, Bob called saying um, uh, Crenshaw wouldn't go into him. Okay, so I told him I put Bronson on him. Right. Okay, so I'm working Bronson and my two-time winner uh, Nimrod. Okay, and. Uh, I'm working both of these dogs and uh, some kind of way Bronson get loose and run over there and jump on them out right, and get killed. Okay. So I come right. the dog dead. I'm like, Oh fuck. How the fuck this shit happened? Anyway. So I said, uh, eh. I said, what the hell are we going to do? So I got to thinking, I said, damn, Bill got that damn dog over there. Did that motherfucker at 42. I think it was 42, 43, something, 41 and a half or something. Uh, something like that. I said, man, I said, we're going to have to use that dog. Kill him. He just got off the chain and killed two dogs. Kill him. We just matched him. No, kill him. We can't do it. Nah, man, fuck that shit. Man. We're going to heal this motherfucker. We're healing him up, but we're just going to use him, man. He said, he already ready. He done been work. I got to do that. Walk him a little bit. He, 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 all right. But kill him. Look at him. Man. God damn it. We're going to fix him up. Yeah. <laughs> right, and uh, and uh, man, we put him on Bama, and I'm telling you, Lord of mercy, hey, everything they said about how hard Bama could bite, he was all of that. I mean, man, that mud put holes in John White. You'd have thought somebody had a machete hitting that motherfucker. But right, John White just just kept. Um, going into that muzzle and and yeah, you hear me? I hear you. Yeah, you, did you get a phone call? Yeah, no, no, I just uh, yeah, I, what, yeah, you down? Yeah, I'm here though. I'm here. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And so John Wayne, um, 
John Wayne got him, and, and Crenshaw was like, uh, but, but, but but the night that before we did the dog, man, Crenshaw, he had all his boys with him, and man, he came to the hotel, man, he just, he is just talking shit to me, man. I mean, man, Fat Bill, boy, he was talking so much shit to us. He was jumping around and goddamn clowning us. I mean, he clowned the <laughs> shit at us. I mean, he clowned us so hard. He had all the motherfuckers laughing. So when they they were getting ready to leave, right? So I, I, when they were getting ready to leave out the room, I, I, I told Crenshaw, I said, hey, I, I, I want to tell you something. He said, yeah, what's that? I said, now you make sure you ready tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> You feel what I'm saying, really, bro? You make sure you're ready to mock. Huh? We are gonna bust your ass. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. uh, and that's and that's what we do. And then let me just say this. Also, I didn't know because a guy called me one time and said, "Hey, man, uh, I thought you said Crenshaw know you." I said, "Crenshaw do know me." I said, "We was in the box together." He said, "Well, Crenshaw told me he didn't know you." I said, "Shit, that's bullshit, man." Crenshaw met me. Uh, way back in the 80s, uh, let's see, it was way back. And uh, but anyway, I said, uh, he was there at the latest stone match. And um, but what I didn't know is I found out this year that he put Lay Stone one of the top four dead gamers bitches he ever seen. Mm, wow, yeah, and I didn't know that, I just found that out this year. Right. Yep, that's what's up. Yeah. The game is he's seen. <clears throat> yes, indeed. Yeah. Let me ask you about uh Tant. What about going into uh Tant? Uh me and Tant, we done had a, a couple of things that we did. And uh when uh I was com campaigning Lady Stone. He had uh, Miss Yellow and, uh, you know, a female, I guess they call her Miss Yellow. I guess that was what her name was. And uh, <clears throat> they was talking about how rough she was and this and that. And uh, Lady Stone ran her off in about 22 minutes, about 23 minutes, something like that. Mm, okay, okay. Now, being as though you and uh, Buffalo Soldier both was, you know, top of the food chain, you know, at that time, uh, what was it like facing him? Well, uh, facing my brother was 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 a, was a good thing, you know. It was, man, uh, it was the ultimate uh, gentlemanship. You know what I mean? You know, to to meet a legendary dog man that was humble. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, and uh, so, what I did was I took a really a puppy. The puppy wasn't but sixteen months old. And uh, but he was just you know just eating everything up, you know what I mean, and doing this and doing that, and uh, and I said, well, hell, we'll meet him up there, and we met in Kentucky, and uh, it went almost three hours, two hours and something, and I think it was Akbar, I can't remember the darn name. I years ago, I I thought it was uh uh what's what's his name? What's the other the handicap? But uh, I didn't know it was Akbok, but somebody correct me and told me it was the Akbok dog or something like that. But anyway, um, Lemonade whooped the shit out of Buffalo Soldier Dog. I mean, whooped that motherfucker all over the place. I mean, whooped his ass. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, punished him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just throwing him, slamming him there, just throwing him any kind of way he wanted to. But the puppy came out of the Eliminator. And that's what one buffalo the thing once the puppy started letting up and lost interest then um um uh buffalo dog which was a veteran you know seasoned dog it was much older and uh he just you know picked it up and that's how we lost that one but it went almost uh it was two hours and something i believe you know something like that but it was a good experience and and you know and, I, and of course you know anytime you do something like that you want to get back you know, but uh, we, we, you know, it, it never happened again. But it was a pleasure. But I, I told Buffalo we were gonna be in good shape, and he'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if the puppy hadn't came out of, we'd have finished it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you? What, what was it about the uh, the puppy that he showed you that made you say, "Yeah, I'm gonna take him out." He was just biting everything down, man. I ain't even think it was gonna go that long. I ain't even think it was gonna be that game, man. That motherfucker, man. That something, man. Everything I rolled him on, he did shit. Ain't nothing last twenty minutes with that man. Right. He's just biting him down, but. What happened was I rode, uh, let's see, nine, 10 hours, and I took a puppy and drawed him down. And uh, I took I took his greatest weapon was his mouth. And so I, I, I really drawed him down a little too far. And, uh, and, uh, and he didn't have the same mouth that I had seen, you know, that, that we, when we were rolling, he, right. he didn't have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of it is a learning experience, too, you know. Absolutely. You, know, you go through different things. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Dogman of the Year, Tito and the Local Boys, uh, Champion Ninja, how was that? Oh, uh, man. that uh, Matter of fact, uh, Eliminator Sister, I did him that the, in the same year uh, uh, with uh, Buffalo Soldier. Then I turned around and did... Uh, uh, his sister, which was drill bit. And, um, uh, and she whooped the shit out of Tito dog and just had Ninja all looking funny, looking like she was going to quit. You know what I mean? And, um, she just, the puppy come out of it and she just, she just gave it up, man. Uh, and, uh, but it went about three hours too. And so what I did with that same dog, you know, my buddies were like, man, go and kill that bitch. Get rid of it. And I said, you know what? I said, uh, she wasn't but 16 months old when I did her. And uh, I said, uh, shit, I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to feed this month. So I took her back and let her sit around and roll her a little bit more. And she got a little bit more experience. And then I, I matched her. Uh, I wound up matching her eight times and I won five. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um. Mm -hmm. On that the card with uh Tito and the, and the local boys, whatever. I think Tyrone was on that card as well, right? Yeah, he had went before us, and uh, cause we did bitches, and uh, he, he just showed out on them. Um, he just uh, he he, uh, he just you, showed he showed he showed. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, Tyrone just showed out, you know, he just showed his dominance and, uh, and took them out. And, um, uh, you know, and, and I just think that was the, the beginning of him, you know, showing he was quality animal. You know, he, he, he was a good dog, man. I, I really liked the Tyrone. Uh, I, I felt like a 50% Tyrone was better than 100% anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a high praise. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yes, indeed. And yeah. um, so uh, uh, grand champion uh, Flop Flop from uh from Only in America Kennels. Uh, you got a chance to see her? How was she? I must have uh, I seen him Yeah, yeah, I seen Flop Flop go, and uh, Flop Flop had a style. That's a, you know she her style fit her name. She hit you in the chest and flop on the ground and roll and come up. And you know, you would think that ain't a good style, but I'm gonna tell you, you know, it's a lot of people, um, you know, that uh, seen Flop Flop go, thought they could whoop her, but I think she wound winning the eight. How many she wound up winning? Eight, five, yeah, or whatever. Eight. She won, yeah, yeah, eight in uh, five different yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah, she she was sharp, man. She 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 bite the hell at you. You know what I mean? She really, I mean, she just had a funny style, man, but. But she she get the job done, you know. What I mean, when I seen her, you know. Now, you know, sometimes as dogs develop and grow, they're you know they they you know they might be at one stage, and then as they keep going, they just get better and start you know doing it better. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um. So, um. I was told that you won uh, five out of five shows versus Cuban Link and uh, uh, Boot Camp Clink and uh, down in the Florida show or whatever. So uh, 
what dogs were you using down there? Uh, we um, what we did was uh, uh, it was uh, missing link and uh, a guy named Ulysses, which was an uh, understudy a uh, uh, Lincoln now. And they had Champion Chaos, Champion Bobo, and uh, I think it was a one one time winner, uh, Terminator, which was Ulysses. All right, then um, boot camp in them had uh, a, a male at 48, and I had a male at 48 named Bruiser. Uh, I went on to win four with, with Bruiser, but if you want me to take you through it a little bit. Okay, oh, so okay, so with uh, 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 Link, they, they had Champion Chaos, and uh, it was a, a guy, I can't think of his name right now, but he bred the the dog we use named Ricky. And so, you know, um, but, you know, we got them all on the program. We got them on the things that we like to do. And so uh, <clears throat> when he come out, <clears throat> uh, Ricky um, hits chaos in the muzzle. And I mean, just, I mean, just shred his muzzle, man, like it was damn, like it wasn't nothing, man. I mean, he was biting the shit out of it, man. Right. I mean, you know, and uh, and I think that went about 40, 30 something minutes and chaos quit. You know what I mean? Ricky carried him out. So then they come in there with Bobo, you know, and I had sold Kush. Uh, Kush was two time winner going for his championship. And uh, uh, Bobo was going for grand championship. Chaos was going for grand championship too, but he lost, you know. So uh, when they got ready to do Kush and Bobo, uh, they put him in there and the dogs get to going and, Missing Link, he walk around there beating his chest like King Kong. Grand champion Bobo, grand champion Bobo. <laughs> Boom, go home. Boo -hoo 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 -hoo. 95, we send you 95. Boo, -hoo 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 -hoo. Boo right. you go 95, you know. Boy, they got everybody laughing at me and all that. So I'm just sitting there and I'm telling the guy, say, hey, man, you need to talk to the dog. Oh, uh, man, ain't no sense of me talking to him. Shit, he getting his ass whooped. I mean, Bobo was putting it on his ass. But what they, a lot of people don't know, it's all in the schooling, bro. Right. It's all in the schooling. So, Kush was used to getting his ass whooped. You see what I'm saying? All he wanted to know is you, you there with him. And he'll fight, he'll, he'll fight back. So Bobo just, oh, man, just doing his thing. So I said, damn. I said, man, get over there and talk to the dog. Oh, man, ain't no sense of me talking to him. I said, fuck it, I'll talk to him. I said, you know, when I used to feed Kush, he was a young pup. You know how it is you raising dogs. Everybody right. got their own little thing they do. So I would talk to Kush. He'd be down there in them bushes. I said, Kush, Kush, in the bush. I said, you better get on out them bushes. Well, Kush, what you doing in them bushes? Boy, that son of a bitch jumped hide in the bush. <laughs> that motherfucker be jumping up. That motherfucker be jumping up. I'm looking at him like, that motherfucker jump. You know what I mean? Oh, Kush, you better get out them bushes. I mean, man, he go to running around, flipping. I mean, just goddamn doing it all. So when Bobo was in his ass in, and, 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 and you know, he looked like he was going to get up, I come over there. I said, Kush, I said, what you I said, Kush, Kush in the bush. What you doing over there? Boy, you better get it. Man, that son of a bitch looked at me and he killed Bobo. <laughs> but <laughs> do, look, look, but, but as he was going through the process of killing Bobo, Mr. Link walking around beating his chest. Boo, you go 95. Boo. -hoo -hoo. And then all of a sudden, when they seen Kush was putting the final finishing touch on that motherfucker, they wasn't talking no more 95 shit. Right. <laughs> Oh, let us just stop. And then, so, okay, that was two. So then we did a uh, uh, grand champ. We made grand champion uh, on them with JP. So then uh, it, the last one is a uh, grand champion JP. 
So we put the motherfuckers in there, man, and I'm telling you, boy, they were two class of the tank. And uh, uh, Terminator looked like a damn, uh, I don't know, man. It looked like a damn Sega Tooth Tiger in there. That was a big son of a bitch, you know what I mean? Right. And uh, he hit JP in the chest. He was all in JP chest. And they were like, yeah, we're going to kill your shit, this, that, this, that. They screaming and. Boy, you know how them Cubans, man. I love my Cuban brothers, man. I love them motherfuckers. They, they be excited. I am ta -da -ta, ta -da -ta -da -ta -da. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I'm in a motherfucker, right? <laughs> All of a sudden, goddamn. Goddamn JP started getting to that motherfucker going to his ass in his chest and goddamn his kidneys and goddamn start getting in his throat <laughs> all in his muscle. And man, them motherfuckers got quieter than a motherfucker. <laughs> right. I'll let I'll let it you know, I can't say I don't know how to uh, it, it, it's Spanish, but it's Cuban Spanish. You know, I don't know how to speak right. it. Well, all that shit stop. So <laughs> I hear that. And uh, so, uh, uh, and then JP just put the final touches on him, just took him out. I mean, took him out. Man. I mean, took him out. So, uh, you know, we we had a pretty good run, man. And and uh, it's so many, it's so many exciting things that we we have been a part of, and there's so many good brothers and sisters out here. And uh, the only thing that I, I I hate is 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 see like. You know, my thing is like this here. It's four things going to happen, and you can't get away from them. Win, lose, draw, or pick up. They're going to happen. You can't stop that. One of them going to happen, little brother. You got to be able to figure out which one you need to do based upon what's happening. Yes, sir. You got me? You know, and to me, it's sad to see a man have a good dog and because he in front of one that's whooping him, that don't mean he can't whoop another one. Right. You can stop this and then put him, and fill him up and go get another one. I did it. Hell, I didn't even stop my dog. She quit drill bit. I, she quit on top on that ninja bit. She will tear that ninja bitch ass up. But the puppy came out of it. I took that same puppy and I won five matches. Right. But yeah, and then after we did that, uh, we did a little dog, little general, and then down there in the Florida area, and everybody was talking. No, 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 no. Well, we won that one too, and then we did uh, 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 Bruiser Brother, Gyro, and we put him on a, a guy named Clarence up there uh, around Lake City somewhere. And uh, we went up there, and they had a dog was off. Uh, uh, Let's see, uh, Hurricane Kennel's boss man brother, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he got the dog. Boss man came from uh, Crenshaw, I believe. Yeah, yeah, came from Crenshaw, and this guy Clarence had a brother, and so you know my buddy, he was like, "Yo, man, uh, you know, man, uh, my man know what he's doing, man. My man know how to work some dogs." I said, "He do." He said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, that's good." You know, that's what I said. That's good. So everybody ought to be, you know, you know, it ain't like, you know, you just getting a cakewalk. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And uh, so we uh, took Jairo over there and um, when Jairo heard him out and in the process of curing him out, Jairo went to growling and stuff. So then I knew then I said, OK, I said he he on top, you know, winning. I said, and, and he growling. I said, shit, you know, we'll do him again. And uh, I turned around and uh, so the boys had the beast, you know, they said they wanted to do something. So I was like, hey, hey I'm down with it. So I um, uh, you that uh, um, Sadie is the only dog that lived that went against Tornado. Hmm, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she the only dog that live. I I I, I saw said, yeah, and um, man, I'm trying to get this shit off, but I can't. 
What what happened? Okay. I got it. I got it. So okay, so that that was gyro. And um so when I when I did uh, oh yeah, yeah. Gyro. And so when I did gyro against the beast, they went about an hour and something. But uh gyro, you know, I felt like gyro should have won it, but he he gave it up, you know, so you know, he he quit, you know, and, and to me, I thought the beast is was a good dog because he stayed there to finish. But this spectacular dog that they was talking about, I didn't see that. But I did see, you know, he stayed there. And Gyro, to me, if uh, he would have, uh, you know, just stayed in there, I felt like he could have took him. But he, he he gave it up, you know. He he quit. And uh, but Gyro lived, you know. He, he, he you know, but uh, he didn't die like the other dogs that died in the pit. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. so we had two dogs to go, not just them two, but we don't have a whole lot of other dogs to go against some dogs with hard mouth. And uh, a lot of people seem to think when you get bit by a hard mouth dog that you can't make it. Well, it's all in the preparation before you get there. You know what I mean? And, right. uh, you know, and uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah, man, that's, that's what happened with that situation. Okay. Uh, the Cunninghams, uh, uh... Tell us about that, uh, matching into the Cunningham. Oh, uh, man, going into them brothers, it was like, you know, really understanding where I stood. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, at, at uh, you know, when you, uh, you know, in, in the game, you know, you're trying to figure out where you stand. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, how, how well you do what you do. And so when all the, the black guys would say, oh, we got some boys for you. I'm like, yeah, go get them. So it was like the Cunningham. Like, cool, I ain't got no problem with that. Hell, we can do that. And uh, so we did. And uh, we matched uh, Hachi. Now, this is going to trip you out. Um, Cunningham's Hachi, Cunningham's Boomer, Whitley's Ike, and I forget the male name that Butch had, my homeboy, that gave me the latest Stone Dogs. Um, all four of them were little mate brothers <clears throat> at the same litter. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so when we, um, the boys got the Cunningham and them, and they said they had two weights that they wanted to cover, I said, okay, bet. So I did Lady Stone and her brother Turbo the same night, and we won both matches against them. Then uh, we turn around and um, they said, look, we want to do the brother. So I said, bet. And um, and then I told him, I said, well, if you win, your dog going to die. I said, you know, because Turbo was just a hard biting, rough, you know, just smart, just going to take, you know, finish you, you know, just going to clean you up, just going to take you out. And so, but I didn't understand. I was in the AC in the hotel. Then I was in the AC in my van. And when we went down there to the place where we we're gonna do the dog, they had the dog, they dog, Boomer, on the side of a barn in the fucking sun. And I was like, these motherfuckers crazy. <laughs> it's hot as a motherfucker, bro. I'm talking about when you come out the goddamn van, you pouring down sweating, you that kind right. of heat. You understand what I'm saying? We in South Carolina, right? Right. So I'm like, I'm I'm like, you know, I'm thinking, oh man, these motherfuckers are stupid, you know what I mean? But all alone, that was the plan to get me in the heat, not fight me when it was cool. Right. Because of the pace, you know what I mean? That the dogs, you know, they fast, they coming hard. You know what I'm saying? Right. And but see, at the time, I didn't, I, I didn't. I'm trying to figure out how the hell you got your dog. Now you know when the heat come off the side of a barn, a metal barn. Shit, that shit come right up. You know what I'm saying? This dog Absolutely. was right there. I'm looking, I'm like, man, these dudes crazy. So then they said, I said, well, what are we going to do the thing? Oh, we're going we're gonna to do it in here. Oh, we got this big fan. We're going to cut it on and all that. And so they had done already plan to make sure it was hot. And they wanted to do their dog in the heat. And we run hot and not be able to finish. And so what happened, we went, um, it went almost three hours. 
they got broke up all the way through the process. And then in the end, we uh, hemorrhage. And and as we hemorrhage, and I swear to God, this is no lie, bro. We was shake the shit out that dog, and then we'll fall down, and then we'll hit him. And we kept doing that for about 30 minutes until we got to the three-hour mark. And then uh, it was uh, Boomer turn to scratch. It was uh, Boomer turn to scratch, and Boomer came falling. Bloom, 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 right. bloom, 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 and dived on Turbo. Turbo uh, lost from exhaustion in the heat, and uh, Boomer died from the ass whooping that he got. Right, you know, right. he, he got he got beat up real bad. You know what I mean? So that's how that came about. And then uh, after that, the Cunninghams was like, "Look here, man. You know, we, we pretty much running the same dogs, and uh, you know, uh, we don't, we don't need to do this no more." I said, "Well, okay, I don't have a problem with it, but you know, they went and got them. You know, so I, I want to know you let them know. You know, we ready." You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so that's how we ended that. Yeah. Okay, and uh, how was it facing uh, Roadblock Kennels and uh, uh, Roadblock Kennels, Mc, uh, McNasty, Mr. T, you know what I'm saying? They said they were yeah. some good competitors. Oh, man, you know, um, you, you know, you start saying Mr. T and McNasty, you, you're talking about some of the best dog men in the country, you know? And um, we went up there. We well, we took three dogs up there. We took a son off of Channelman, which was Gray Eagle, and uh, I had one one match with him, and uh, and uh, beat a champion in uh, what about twenty minutes? Just ate him up, just folded him, had him like a bomber bee, couldn't even get off the ground. And so we took him uh, and two other dogs. Uh, so I had went and. Um, you know, we was trying to find a better dog than what we took with uh, the ugly dog. But I went to Gene Smith, and he was like, hey, man, you know, you can, you can get that dog. You know, and uh, I was like, okay. I said, he said, you know, that was it. I said, well, hell, we'll take it. He was an undershot dog. But, you know, we're going on a trip. So, you know, instead of taking one dog, we're going to take three. So we took ugly hit man and uh that was the dog we went into ricky with that's after we come from up there, up there and uh so uh we we put ugly and uh uh hit man in there and uh no 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 we put ugly and uh 50 50 that was the uh, mr t and them dog 50 50 and uh man them them jokers got the going man got the going and Ugly, it went about an hour and something, you know, and, and, and it was all good, and Ugly gave it up. So, you know, we from Carolina, so they thinking, that, you know, we Carolina boys soft, you know, we, we got these boys, right. you know what I mean? So yeah. it was another guy named Nap that was friends with McNasty and them, and he had a dog. And so uh, they put him in there, and uh, we put uh, uh, Hitman in there, and and they they done bet every dime they got on that raggedy motherfucker. <laughs> they thought because they won the first one, we ain't have shit, you know, the second one. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but that but that second motherfucker bite like hell, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. And uh we put him in there and uh and we curled nap dog out and um and we won all the money. And and then before I left, you know, Mr. T was like, yo, bro. He said, man, you know, we uh we bet everything we had, man. I said, damn, you know, I kind of felt sorry for him. <clears throat> and I said, well, here, bro, you know, if you, if you need something, man, you know. Right. Like this, you know what I mean? Just look out for the brother. You know, sometimes we have to uh, be respectful to him, humanity. You know what I mean? Because uh, sometimes we will. You know, we we kind of go over our head thinking, you know what I'm saying, right? Absolutely. And uh, and uh, and uh, it didn't work out for them. And then on the mail, you know, uh, we was going into a guy named um, 
kingfish kid and uh he didn't um show up with no dog and so um you know so we 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 brought him on back we didn't get him done up there but we got him done somewhere else though <clears throat> mm -hmm. that's how that went <clears throat> okay yes indeed you know um, i heard you got a conditioning program that's second to none they call it the program can you tell us about it a little bit <laughs> well the, the the program is uh is uh it's, it, to me, it's a spiritual vibe, you know what I mean? Because, like, when you conditioning, you working, you know, you got to really be in tune with your animals, you know what I mean? Uh, right. A lot of people just, just doing shit just to do it. But, you know, it's like, you know, um, you know, like, even when you, you, you with your girl, right? You know, your girlfriend or your wife or whatever the case may be, you know, you got to love her, you know what I mean? And if if, 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 right. if you ain't if you ain't loving her, you ain't gonna be getting everything you need to get. You follow me, right? So with the program, it consists of a lot of loving the dog, and uh, and when I say love the dog, I ain't talking. I ain't no freaky motherfucker. I ain't with all that <laughs> shit, you know. Yeah, right. Fuck all that. Yeah, we ain't doing that shit. All I'm talking about is hugging and rubbing and loving and just you know just you know what I'm saying. And then right. going through your your workouts, you know what I mean. But you. You giving the dog love, and so, and uh, and then the uh, the program put them in a position, you know, where they can um, go, you know, go hard. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, it, it, it you know it depends on the dog. You know, it depends on the situation. Sometimes they take it real well. And sometimes they don't. You know, uh, I can. Uh, I remember one time, I was uh, um, some boys out of Atlanta. They uh, wanted me to uh, condition uh, two dogs for them, and I did. Well, the first dog that we did, we went down to Lake City or somewhere, but but we drove. I drove all the way from North Carolina to Atlanta. Then we left Atlanta and then drove all the way to Lake Lake City. You know what I mean, Florida. Right. But but anyway, that that was a lot of riding. But even before we got there, um, you know. Uh, this dog became anemic on the ride. You know, I know that probably sounds crazy to you, but it, it, if 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 you done done enough dogs, and then you know there there'll be some people to be able to tell you that. And right. when we left my house, he was bouncing and jumping and hitting the chain, and oh man, he was ready to go. But when we took the ride to Atlanta, this motherfucker was slobbing and looking all crazy. I'm like, God damn, what the hell happened to you? You know, damn. so <clears throat> I'm doing everything I can to try to get him together and, and put fluids in him and, and, and trying to, you know, just, you know, and uh, he just, uh, you know, he became anemic on the travel. And, uh, and um, so when he showed, uh, I just didn't feel good about him from the beginning because, you know, when I would feed him, you know, the the, the other dog that I was working for him, he ain't want no food. You put his for you put the food down in front of him, shit. That mother trying to get that dog. Long as a dog would close by, cause you know that's what I would do. I, I would, you know, put the food down and then take a dog and walk it close to him and and if if, if you know most most motherfuckers either want to eat or fight, uh, want to fight, right? Right. So when I when I when I walked the dog over there to him, that the Brenda dog, that son of a bitch kept right on eating like the dog wasn't there. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I said, I said, I said, man, this motherfucker. Yeah, I don't know about this motherfucker. But now that other one, that son of a bitch, he he wouldn't even eat. He was trying to get it. You see what I'm saying? Right. So. You know, and then um, so we went down there, and and the dog lost. You know, which I didn't think he was gonna win. No way. He, he just like I said, and and uh, you know, you you put the food down there. He wanted to eat. He he wasn't. He didn't want to do nothing. But the other one wanted to do something. So then they said after we lost, you know, they uh, uh they wanted me to bring the dog back, and I was like, okay, cool, no problem. But I know that other dog was a better dog because, like I said. You know, I put the food down. That some bitch wanted to eat, and the other one wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? So um, that that was an experience that I had, and I had never had a dog to uh, to 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 
to lose it like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's the first time. That's the first time I had, I had ever seen that. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, tell us about your uh, about Grand Champion Bronson. Oh man, Grand Champion Bronson, man. He he was one of those uh, King Cobra. You know what a King Cobra snake is? Oh, absolutely. That was his style. He raised up on you and man and knock holes in your ass. At <laughs> <laughs> one top hanger, one bottom hanger, one on the left, one on the right. <laughs> and hey, he was killing them with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, another crazy story of uh what I had told you about earlier with, with Kush was uh we uh, uh let's see this was uh, uh i think this was bronson third one and uh when he made ch champion and uh we was down there to, to gangbusters kennel and uh that tb and gangbusters and all them they were running together and uh, so um i said you know i let bill you know bill was was handling and conditioning them and so uh, I get there, and I hear a dog screaming and hollering, man. I mean, screaming and hollering. So I'm thinking, okay, good. And um, I come around the corner, and Bakri said, man, man, Bronson getting his ass tore up. I said, what? I said, you fucking serious? He said, yeah. I said, shit, man, I'm going to And uh, showing sure up, boy, that dog was in his ass, and he was hollering like hell. Man. I said, Bronson, I said, if you don't get your black ass up, I'm going to kill your fucking ass. You hear me? Man, that motherfucker looked at me and went to God damn, he killed that son of a bitch in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a relationship. That's, that's, that's a good relationship with you and your dog. Hey, bro, I swear to God, bro, he ate that motherfucker up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I swear you can hear him. Cotton piss on the pen. It was so quiet, bro. I mean, man, at, uh, at first they were like, yeah, yeah, we're killing your shit, boom, we're killing your shit, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, Bronson went to biting that motherfucker. <laughs> and so they laid out like, God damn, he was a, a statue. <laughs> <Right. laughs> hey, motherfucker had, had one hang on the left and one hang on the bottom. And killed that motherfucker. I mean, left him right there, man. That was so funny, man. Them dudes were like, man, what in the hell? Just We was winning. I said, yep, you thought you were going to win. But that that's why, you remember I told you about that vibe. You know, you know, you got to spiritually connect with them. Because right. I'm telling you, man, I've seen it. I've done it. Not in, Them two ain't the only dogs I done done it with. I done did it with other dogs. And I know, when they know you believe in them, and you for them, and you show them that love. You know, I ain't, you know, you got like, some guys, you know, they do s sexual stuff with the dogs. You know, like, jack them off, you know? Right, right, right. And say, I ain't gonna do that, man, you know? And, uh, you know, now, like, I'll put him in a female, you know what I mean? Like, right. if I'm breeding a female, I'll put him in there, I'll do that. But I ain't finna goddamn do all that other shit. I ain't gonna do that. Hell no. You know, people do it, you know, but I, I'm not going to do it. You know, I, I believe that I want my relationship with my dog to be loving. I don't want to be from a sexual perspective. You see where I'm coming from? Right. I don't want, I don't want him to look at me and say, yeah, boss, jack my dick. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't finna do that shit. I don't even do my own shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I get my girl to do that. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> right. Yeah, fuck that shit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, and then um, I went on to uh, win two more with him, and we grand him out. And uh, and it was history, man. But believe it or not, I wouldn't even breed that motherfucker, man. I wouldn't even breed him, bro. I mean, I had a grand champion. I wouldn't even breed him. I said, I ain't breeding you the shit. <laughs> a lot of people are like, man, you in the nah, I wouldn't breed him. Cause 
I just didn't like how he did it, man. It was like he, he, he fought like a cobra, like a king cobra for real, man. I'm talking about right. he would raise up on his back lip and he'll growl at him and then hit him, boy, and be hitting bleeders on their ass, man. The motherfucker be bleeding like a motherfucker. Right. <laughs> Yeah, he just had a weird style, man. I just I didn't want no puppies off of that. Right, right. Yeah, it's, that happens a lot, you know. I mean, but that's your yard. You got to do what's best for your yard. You know what I mean? Mm. So, so, um, what happened with um? To ask you this too, um, with Paul's uh, uh champion termite. Uh, what happened with the um, termite? And uh, okay, uh, I matched. Gray Eagle, well, you remember I told you we went up there to Michigan right. and we weren't able to do that. So then we come back here. And so the, they said they had a dog named Revenge and they wanted to do him. And I was, okay, good. So I'm saying we'll go 44. But they came in at 46. And uh, or 46 and a half. We came in at 44 and a half. And I said, fuck it, we'll do it. You know what I mean? You know, you know, you know how it is. You know, right. you just wanna do it, man. And uh we went two hours uh with a son off of Channelman. And uh Gray Eagle, you know, that they, they was I mean, they was swapping chest, shoulders, hopes, you know what I mean? So I'm always thinking, what can I do to to make it better for my dog? So at the two hour mark. I mean, both of them swapping, you know, they, you know, you don't know, we really don't know who's going to win. But I say, uh, let me get a scratch to continue. So uh, the referee asked him, and he said, yeah, I'll give you a scratch to continue. So he gave me the scratch to continue. And uh, Gray Eagle stood the line and took the count. Hmm, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so we lost. All right, so I had another bitch that I was doing. And uh and her name was Sheba. And man, they put a bad ass nose dog on. Man, that bitch got on our nose and we're trying to peel it off. Man, Sheba hit that bitch and then she was straight off a Jeep too. That Sheba hit that bitch in the chest. I mean say Sheba hit her in the chest. And man, what it went about, I think it was about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. Man, it looked like somebody took a butcher knife and stabbed that motherfucker. I mean, bit that bitch down. <laughs> bit, it, bit, that bit her down. So old man Chavis, he looking at this shit, right? So he like, he, he said, uh, look here, I, 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 want, I want to talk to you. He said, I want you to call me. I want to talk to you in private. I said, okay. So I called him. He said, listen, he said, I got a dog here that'll whoop that termite dog. I know he'll whoop that termite dog. If you do that termite dog, I know he'll whoop that termite dog. You know, that's what he kept saying. Right. And I said, well, okay. Now, I met Perry Powell and Fletcher Chavis and Chavis' son. What was his name? Uh, uh, damn, I can't think of his name. Uh, it'll come to me. But anyway, uh, I met all them together. All them was together. That was my first time meeting them. So, uh, I said, uh, okay. I said, I'll tell you what. Uh, what you want for the dog? He said, give me 1500 I said, no problem. I give him 1500 I take the dog. I said, uh, you, are, you you know, he ready. Oh, he ready. He ready. You ain't got to do nothing with him. He ready. Oh, okay. I said, well, ain't no sense me looking at him. If, if you say you ready, you know, old man Chavis, I'm going on his word, right? Right. So then, then I called Perry Powell. I said, well, listen, man, you know. Uh, I got this dog and I want to put him on termite. And uh, he said, yeah, yeah, we can do that. I said, okay, good, good. So uh, we set it up. Now, remind you, this is my first time ever going to Perry Powell House. I ain't never right. been there. Right. Okay. Now, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to make sure that I protect you as well as I protect myself. Right. You follow me? Okay, mm -hmm. so we get there. It's two hundred motherfuckers there. Damn, it's so many motherfuckers there. The cars is running out the goddamn driveway. You understand what I'm saying? Right. All right. Now I didn't know this at the time, but after everything went down, 
the fucking trailer park right there next to his, his, his house. You know, I didn't know. You know, we don't know. It's my first time coming down there. But it's right. a trailer park. So how many motherfuckers in the trailer park have been complaining about them goddamn dogs that we don't know about? Right, right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we put the dogs down and uh, Big Joe out there and Big Joe fight like a cur, termite all in his ass in and Big Joe did the snapping and pulling hangers and fucking his teeth up, fucking his head up. And uh, he got, uh, you know, Big Joe turning, termite turn. You know, they just both look, you know, kind of rough there. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, and uh, and uh, to me, I I just I just felt like if Big Joe would have been a bulldog, he'd have whooped termite. But uh, Big Joe wasn't, and uh, he gave it up. But he exposed termite. And matter of fact, termite was retired after that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Big Joe retired termite. So after that, uh, somebody called the, the 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 police. I don't know who it was. I mean, you know, uh, I'm sure it might have been somebody from the trailer park or wherever the hell. So all the folks, you know, they come, but they can't get in there because all them goddamn cars in there. So we was right. able to break down the pit and everything. Everything was down. Everything, neat, you know, you know, they ain't got everything straightened out. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so when they come in there, you know, I'm like, shit, they ain't running. It's a misdemeanor. What the fuck? I ain't going to break. Niggas breaking their legs and goddamn twisting their ankles and busting their heads <laughs> and they all running through the goddamn woods. Man, I ain't finna do none of that shit. I'm a goddamn day. Right. They can take me to jail, goddamn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all right. good, right? So, uh, you know, they asked me, they said, well, what you do? I said, man, I was at a cookout. I don't know what the hell. Okay, okay, well, we're going to take your information. So they took the information. Then they come back uh, a week or so later or whatever. And then they said that... Uh, <laughs> Um, they had a witness saying that I was in the pit and this and that and that and this. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm still not, you know, admitting to that shit. Right. So um, I, I don't know nobody. I don't know no. I don't know nobody down there. I don't know no lawyer. I don't know nobody. You know. So I asked Perry Powell, like, yo, man, just uh, who who would be a good? Lawyer? Oh, my lawyer, man. My lawyer, the best lawyer. I'm like, okay. This brother in the military. So you know, military gonna make sure they cover their people, right? So I'm right. like, okay, cool. You know, I, hey, I hired your lawyer to have the mail case. So during that time, I had done uh, uh, dealt with another situation, and I was already doing, you know, what I, I done got locked up after that. And so they uh, brought me back to court to uh, go through this process. And so uh, my lawyer said, which is the same lawyer Perry Powell had, he said that uh, the most they can give you is six months. He said, you're already doing time. Go on and do the six months. And, and you know, they're going to run it concurrently. It ain't even going to make a difference on your sentence. I said, okay, cool. Now, uh, they told me, Perry Powell told me, said, uh, yeah, uh, Anthony Robinson. And then he showed me Anthony Robinson in the courtroom. Now, all these motherfuckers in the courtroom, one motherfucker got on shade. You know, if you go right. in the courtroom, they tell you to take them shades off, right? Right. You know, but this motherfucker here had on shades. But I never, I didn't know Anthony Robinson. Perry Powell, the one invited him over there. I didn't invite the motherfucker. I didn't even know the motherfucker, right? So um, this dude uh, signed paper saying that uh, me and Perry Powell was in the pit. You know, but, uh, you know, I just took the plea and, and that way went on down the road. And then the next thing I know, somebody tell me Perry Powell said that uh, we snitched on him about the dog fight. I'm like, man, you got to be bullshit. Are you serious? Wow. Are you for real? I mean, this man, the one, turned me on to his lawyer. You understand what I'm saying? You right. know, like I'm, I know, two people cannot have the same lawyer if one going to turn on the other. Now, we He's both true. know that. Everybody know that. Right. So I don't know if this nigga is senile or what the hell going on with this nigga, man. But whatever it is, he need to get some goddamn mental help or something, you know, get his ass straightened out and quit running around telling all these goddamn lies, man. You know, just, just deal with the truth, bro. I don't know what the fuck this nigga is pissed off about, but, uh, you know, ain't none of that shit happen. And, you know, it's, it's, it's clown business, you know? Right, right. 
Yeah, man. I don't know what this damn thing. I'm trying to cut it off. Oh, so you must be getting text messages and calls too. Oh, hold on one minute, bro. Uh-huh. And we can't get this. Yeah, there you go. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, he good. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but anyway, you know, I, I don't know what his problem is, bro, but he, he need to get his shit together and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, move on. You know what I'm saying, bro? Because that's some stupid ass shit, man. You know, the, the shit is in black and white. You can see, you know, uh, right. I took a plea. He took a plea. And then you gonna turn around and say, I, I told it, motherfucker, the, the nigga you invited told it. Right. You invited this motherfucker. I don't know none of them son bitches. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, right. you know, that that that's where I'm at with that. So that's that's how that went. And then too, uh there was uh uh, uh, uh after all that, uh he calls me one day, say, Hey man, I want you to be my corner man. I said, Yeah. And he doing a two time one off term like going for a championship into Sammy Stallard Prissy. So I said, okay, it's, it's an honor, man. You asked the brother to be your corner man, man. I, I appreciate that. I said, yeah, yeah. So we there and turn the dogs loose. And man, his shit getting slaughtered. I right. mean, straight slaughtered. When I tell you slaughtered, I mean straight. And he just stuck there looking at it. You know, he just stuck. And I'm like, God damn, God damn the man asked me to goddamn be his corner. I said, God damn, I got to help this motherfucker win this shit some kind of way. I said, damn, how the hell can we win this shit? I said, yo, man, come here. I said, hey. I said, listen, man. I said, call a turn on your dog. Oh, uh, he I said, man, call a turn on your dog. You call a turn on that motherfucker until the referee recognizes. You understand? Right. Because the bitch is getting eight up. Sammy Styler had a six-time, five-time winner. Man, that bitch, that, woo, she was eating a pair of dog. Ah, I mean, she was blistering her, bro. And uh, so uh, he called the turn. The referee recognized the turn. And, uh, and, uh, and I said, listen. I said, you can't wait for that dog to uh, get herself out of hope. You're gonna have to handle that bitch off the bottom. I said, you're gonna, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, man, you got to step your game up, man. You got to handle that bitch off the bottom. I said, and when you do, I said, you, you know, go to the opposite corner and then come back our way. You soon come back to your corner. Cause right. you know we just looking for a miracle now, right? Right. So so made a handle, and the turn was called on his dog. She go across, bam! All right. So then you know, uh, they, they make another handle, and uh, so I told him, I said, look, take your shirt off. You black as hell, dog black as hell. I said you're gonna be a big black s specimen in this corner. I said, but. When you get the dog, cuff the dog, go to that corner, and turn, come back to our corner. I said, hopefully that motherfucker will go that way. You know what I mean? Because the dog killing his dog. I mean, killing his dog. You, you right. hear me, bro? I right. mean, alive. And so he goddamn did that shit. And man, I was looking. And that bitch went to jumping at that corner, over that empty corner. I said, well, I'll be there. <laughs> referee said release man that bitch took off to that empty corner Blah! hit the goddamn wall and goddamn was like punch drunk and got counted out mm -mm -mm. Perry won nah. Nah. I helped him win but his dog died right that that bitch ate his dog up do you hear me <laughs> hey look at that prissy bitch that was a Bad motherfucker. Right. That bitch, that bitch was bad, man. That was a bad bitch. So that's how all that went with Perry Powell and uh, you know, and uh, uh you know, Bulldog can take us a lot of places. Absolutely. And, uh, around a lot of people. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And um mm -hmm. I want to I wanted to ask you a question, my last question for you. It was uh we talked about this the other day on Game Dog Talk, which was a rumor that um 
uh, tornado uh, uh, duck the queen or whatever. Uh, do you know? Do you know if that's true? If that, do you ever hear that rumor before? Let, 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 let me put this to you. If they to put Queen on tornado, I'd have bet with tornado. Mm-hmm. Tornado's a forty-three pound match dog. Queen right. was a 30, 39 pound match dog. Right. Ain't no way she can do that. You're asking too much, huh? What? You're talking about four <laughs> pounds. Yeah, against a monster, too. That what I'm talking about. I, I ain't to listen, little brother. I referee one of tornado matches, right? Okay, let me tell you this, sir. Uh, we were going, uh, okay, Fat Bill called me and said, look, man, we're going down here and, uh, you know, and then they got the thing going. I said, yeah. He said, yeah. So it's, it's one of uh, them Chatterman dogs, right? And so uh, this bitch posted being badder than a motherfucker, right? Mm -hmm. Man, we get down there. So I'm over there. They said, yo, boom, we want you to referee. I'm like, what? They said, yeah, we want you to referee. I said, okay, fuck it. Wade Wash got everything straight. And uh, I said, release, release. Tornado hit that bitch in the chest. And it looked like somebody took a drill and drilled a hole through that bitch chest. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Got that blood. Blood. 12 minutes, that motherfucker was done. 12 right. minutes, my brother. Kill him. You see what I'm saying? So now you talking about put a 39 pound dog on that big motherfucker? Mm hmm. Ain't no way, bro. I'm betting all day on Tornado. All day. But now, okay, let's let's hypothetically speak. Pound for pound, if they was the same weight, Joe Abraham condition, I'm bad with Joe Abraham. Right. Same so weight. You, right. If so so you saying if you feel like if it, if there was the same weight, pound for pound, you you got you would take the queen. Yeah, I'm take the queen. Okay. I'm going to take the queen on conditioning and, you know, and, and her attributes. Okay, okay. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I don't know where that rumor came from, but a lot of people have been hitting me up, asking me about that. And, uh, you know, I wasn't around in that time, so I don't know. You know, man, I want to ask the OGs, man, see how y'all, what y'all felt about it, you know? But, but, but uh, think about it, little bro. If you take a dog that can serve a, a motherfucker chest, at the same weight and then get on the motherfucker smaller than her. Yeah. It's gonna be a problem. <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna be good at all, my brother. Not at all. <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. Well, Rasta man, boom. I wanna thank you so much for your time, brother. This was a extraordinary uh trip down memory lane in history. Uh, a lesson for everybody that's listening. I want to thank you so much for your time, man. And we got to do this again, brother. Uh, yeah, yes, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the, the other process of it. Whenever, whenever you, you know, we ready to, and uh, yes, we, we just make it happen. Cause you know, there's a couple other things that I like to talk about. And, and then I, I let you know that too, you know? Oh, for sure. Most definitely brother. Most definitely. And uh, mm -hmm. like I said, thank you for your time, brother. And, um, hey, you so know what? You can I can I do this? Can I do this? Uh, uh -huh, let's see. Uh, okay, after I beat Blondie, right? Uh huh. Uh, I mean, before I beat Blondie, uh, I got a call that Jack Kelly was gonna put uh, Blondie on the front cover of the magazine, right? Right. So I'm like, yeah. I said, damn, let me call Jack. I said, yo, Jack. I said, you, you gonna put Blondie on the front cover of the magazine? Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the front cover. I said, so if Lady Stone win, you gonna put her on the front? Oh no, I got somebody else. I said, oh yeah. No, oh, okay, no problem. So the picture that everybody see up, that's a picture of Floyd Boudreaux and his wife, and me and Lady Stone on the front cover of the Sporting Dog Journal, twenty nine years later. Twenty nine years later, ain't that something? Ain't that something, bro? Right. 
Amazing. So, and, and so we didn't get it then, but we finally got it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So we can go ahead and end it now, bro. I know you need to go. Oh, okay. no, it's all good, brother. I appreciate your time, brother. I'm going to get with yeah. you. Uh, okay. Salute, then. All right. Salute then. To you, brother. All right. Then.